Hi, welcome back to Shawnee Hills Workshop. Today, I'm going to show you how I built these doors in my game room. Now, I'm not typically a fan of barn doors, but since my game room and workshop are literally in a barn, I thought it was fitting. I built these doors using frame and panel construction from rough sawn ash that was sawn on a circular saw mill. Because of this, I wanted to try to preserve the circular marks from the mill. So that's enough talk. Let's get started building. I'm going to start off by using my track saw to rip these boards down to a somewhat even width. After I do that, that'll give me a good straight edge to do all my joinery from. I'll take those long boards, cross cut them to length, and then we can start assembly. So I've got all the parts for the frame ripped to width and cut to length. And now I've laid it out on my table and I'm going to go ahead and cut the joinery for the domino. After I've got the frame joined together, I'll mark for dados where I'll be putting all the panels. I have ever joined a door together. That's still a long way from done. I gotta break it back apart. I just wanted to see how it went together. But I am pretty impressed. So the next step will be to cut the dados in all the rails and styles, and then I'll resaw and glue up the panels to go inside them. Now that the panels are all glued up, I can fit those to the grooves in the door and get ready for final assembly. Now because these are rough cut and they are thicker in some places than in other places, I might have to use my hand plane to thin them out just a little bit where they fit in the groove because I've got a half inch groove. And even if all the boards are half inch, if they're not lined up as a panel, they may be wider than a half inch total. Where I made the dados in the styles and rails, the roundness of the blade makes the dado a little shallower right there at the corner where the rails meet the style. So I had to take my mortising chisel and chisel those out nice and square. So I feel like I've been sanding for an eternity. I don't know why, but I just thought there would be so much less sanding with this since I was using rough cut lumber that I wouldn't have to sand as much, but even though the finish isn't, that, or even though the finish I'm going for isn't as nice, the amount of work to get to where I'm at has been so much more. But the sanding's done, and I'm finally, finally ready for assembly. So I'm going to get ready and see if I can get this glued up. So now that we got the doors finished, I've got them out of the clamps, got them leaned up against the wall in there where they're going to be going, it's time to focus on the hardware. I ordered some barn door hardware off of Amazon. I think it was around $79 or something like that, but I'll put a link in the description. And what it basically comes with is about 12 feet of track, because I bought it for two 36 inch doors. And it comes with the rollers that the doors attach to and all the hardware to it mounted. This hardware is meant for a residential style framing. So it's got holes drilled 16 inches on center to go in studs like a typical house is built here in America. 
However, my barn is a post and beam type construction and it has a little bit of framing when they built walls around the post, but it is far from being a 16 inch on center. So I'm having to modify mine slightly and it actually would need to be modified for two reasons. The first reason is my door openings have casing on them. And this hardware is meant for an opening that does not have casing, just has sheetrock wrapped around it. Because my casing sticks out a little bit, it would actually get in the way of the back of these bolts here once they go through the door, they would be hitting the casing. But also, because my spans are a little bit more than 16 inches on center, or maybe just offset from where the bolt holes are going to be with the hardware, it gives me a good solid board to mount to. So my lag screws that are mounting the hardware will go through a 5 quarter inch pine board and then into the 7 16 OSB that's on the wall. The good thing about doing this way is it makes it a lot easier to install, or at least in my mind it's going to. So what you're supposed to do is to take one of these rails and hold it up with a level on it, get it perfectly level, and mark the holes to put your hardware on. As you can imagine, this is a pretty long bar and you have a total of 12 feet worth of it that you'd have to get leveled and marked and get the holes exactly perfect before you then add the hardware and the spacers in. Well, I'm going to have the luxury of marking all my um, holes laying flat on the table, get the hardware where I need it to be, then all I have to do is level up one board as I screw it into the wall. So I'm, I've already marked my holes, I'm going to pre-drill those, and then I'm going to take it into the game room area and get ready to mount it to the wall. center, we throw some paint on the walls, all of a sudden this game room started to come together. No one would ever know that just behind these doors is a bunch of lumber. We still got to figure out if we just want to clear coat them, if we can coat a stain. We're just trying to decide and for right now they're just going to stay like this. But um, we hope to figure that out soon. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Um, put a comment telling us why you do or don't like it. And above all, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Have a good day.